In this video, you'll learn all about creating and editing shapes in Adobe Illustrator. You'll learn how to transform basic shapes into unique shapes that will serve as the foundation for your illustrations. There are a few different shape tools, and by default, they're going to be underneath the rectangle tool. So if you click and hold that, you can see all of the different shape tools. Let's start with the rectangle, which the shortcut is M. With the tool, you can just click and drag to draw out a rectangle. If you click and drag while holding shift, it'll make a perfect square. You can also see that indicated by the pink horizontal line if you have Smart Guides turned on, which is underneath View, Smart Guides. To switch back to the selection tool after you've created a shape and you still have the shape tool for your cursor, you can just hit V on the keyboard. To create an ellipse, you can grab the tool by clicking and holding and then dragging to get to the ellipse tool, or the shortcut is L, and then click and drag to draw out an ellipse. If you want a perfect circle, click and drag while holding shift. If you want to create your shape, whether that's a rectangle or ellipse from the center instead of from a corner like normal, what you can do is hold down Option or Alt to draw a shape from the center. And you can even do a combination of keyboard shortcuts, so if you hold down shift, it'll make it a perfect circle. Next up is the Polygon tool, and there's no keyboard shortcut for this one, so you'll find it underneath the Shape Tools. And then just click and drag to create a shape. If you want your polygon to not be rotated, you can hold down Shift so it stays at zero degrees rotation. Also, while you're dragging, you can increase or decrease the number of sides by hitting the up and down arrow keys. Underneath that is the Star tool. Same with the Polygon tool, if you hold down Shift while clicking and dragging, it'll snap it so that it's at zero degrees rotation. Also, while you're dragging with the Star tool, you can hit the up and down arrow keys to create more or less points. When you're clicking and dragging to create a star, you can also hold down Option or Alt to maintain a straight side for all of your points. If you start dragging and then hold Command or Control, you can just adjust the outer point and keep the inner radius constant. Once you've created a star, make sure that it's selected and then you should see this little icon to increase or decrease the number of points. The polygon has a similar thing, but it's a little less obvious. It's this little diamond right here. Stars also have these little circle icons, so you can drag these to adjust the inner radius or the outer radius. Another way to create a shape is to first grab the shape tool that you want. So I'm going to do M on the keyboard to get the rectangle tool, and then just click anywhere, and it'll bring up a dialog box where you can type in the exact dimensions of your shape. And you can click this button to maintain the proportions. So if I change my mind and want this to be 300, then both the width and height will be 300. I'm gonna do a separate video on color, but just for the basics, over here is where you control colors. So there's a fill color, which is the inside color, and then there's a stroke color, which is the outline. So whichever is on top is the one that you're gonna be controlling. So with the fill on top, I can go over here and choose a swatch to recolor this. And then with the stroke on top, I can come over and choose a different color. Again, more on color in a later video. Let's take a look at the stroke panel. I'm just gonna create a rectangle, and you can see that this has a black stroke. To increase the stroke weight or the thickness of that line, you can increase it by using this drop down, or by using the up and down arrows, or by just typing in an exact number. We're gonna skip over the cap because this requires an open shape, so we'll cover it later. Next is the corner. So you can have a pointy corner like this, or you can have a rounded corner, or there's a bevel corner. And then another thing to note about the corner is that there's this number called the limit. So if you look at this triangle, notice this corner here. 
If I go into this box, another way to affect the number is to have the box open like this and then use the arrow keys. So when I arrow down from five to four, notice how this corner goes from pointy to flattened. So that's what the limit does. It decides where pointy corners are going to be made at what limit. A lot of times you don't need to worry about this setting, but in cases where you have something like text maybe that's outlined, you might get some weird pointy jagged edges that you don't want. So this can be a way to get rid of them. The next option is where you want the stroke aligned to. So in this option, it's aligned to the center, or you can have it so the stroke is on the inside and the boundary box is on the outside, or vice versa. So the stroke is aligned to the outside. With the selection tool, if you click a shape, you should see these little circle icons in all of the corners. If you click and drag towards the center on one of these icons, you'll round the corners of the shape. You can also unround by clicking and dragging outwards. If you just want to round a single corner, then select that corner first and make sure that it's more bold, and then you can click and drag to round it. If you want to select just some of the corners, then hold down shift between selecting them to select multiple, and then drag from one of those to round both of those corners. There are also different types of corners. So while you're clicking and dragging a round corner icon, you can hit the up or down arrow keys to switch between the three corner types. Also, if you already have rounded the corners and you want to change the corner type, you can hit Option or Alt while clicking the round corner icon to cycle between the options. You can use and combine all of these techniques for some unique looks. If you want to be really precise about your rounded corners, with the shape selected, find the transform panel, and then you can type in the exact values for each individual corner. If you want all of the corners to be the same, then you can lock this by clicking this icon here and then change the number. You'll also find the round corner option sometimes in the top toolbar if you have enough space. Otherwise, you can click shape to find those options here. The transform panel can be super helpful for editing shapes, especially if you want to be precise and type in exact values. And the properties that show up in the transform panel depend on the type of shape that you're working with. So if I select this rectangle, then you can see we can adjust the width. And if we constrain the proportions, it'll adjust the height accordingly, or you can unconstrain and then type in a different value. There's also rotation, These options are for the corners. You can lock them so that all the corners are updated the same way. Or if you unlock them, you can adjust each corner individually. These little dropdowns allow you to change the type of corner. If you're working with a circle, you can adjust the width and height, and this button will lock the proportions. These options allow you to create a pie-like shape. So I'm gonna put in 45 degrees, and then let's do 60. Once you've put in some angles here, you can actually adjust this right on the shape itself. So the first number is for one handle, and the second number is for the other handle. And if you wanna switch these numbers to invert the pie, you can click this button. You can also rotate the circle here. If you're working with stars, you have options for the number of points, the rotation, and then also the outer radius and the inner radius. And then these are for the corners. And you can change the corner type too. At the bottom of the transform panel, you have options for scale corners and scale strokes and effects. If you have both of these checked and you scale a shape, you can see how the corners are scaling proportional to the shape. And also the stroke weight is scaling too. If you uncheck these and now scale the shape, you can see that the corners are not changing so it adjusts how the shape looks. And also the stroke weight is staying the same even if I scale it up really big or down really small it stays the same width. 
In other videos, we'll talk about drawing custom shapes that aren't built with the shape tools. For those types of custom shapes, you won't have properties down here. But for all types of layers, you'll have properties here. The X and Y coordinates are for where they're positioned on your artboard. And then of course, there's also width and height. One option that you have with this width and height is that you can adjust where it happens from with this little coordinate system here. By default, the reference point where things happen from is in the center. But let's say you wanna change this to the upper right and then you change the height. You can see that it's scaled out from this top right corner. Another thing you can do is skew the shape by putting in an angle here. To scale objects, you can use the selection tool. So first select the object to scale and then hover over these little squares on the bounding box to get the double arrows. From here, click and drag to scale the shape. So you can do just horizontally or just vertically, or if you go from a corner, you can do both. And if you wanna maintain the proportions, you can hold down shift as you're dragging. If you wanna scale the shape from the center, then as you're dragging, hold down the option key. One thing to note between Illustrator and After Effects is that for shape layers in After Effects, there's a size property and then there's a scale property that's a percentage. But in Illustrator, there's just one size property and scaling a shape affects the size property. So you can see the size here in the transform panel. And when I adjust with, by scaling, you can see that those dimensions change. So there's not two different properties, size and scale. It's all the same thing. You can also scale objects with the scale tool. First, select them with the selection tool, and then the scale tool is here or the keyboard shortcut is S. Then click and drag anywhere to scale the object. How the object scales depends on the direction that you drag. If you drag in a diagonal while holding the shift key, it'll maintain proportions. But if you drag horizontally, it's going to scale just horizontally. And if you drag vertically, it'll just scale vertically. But if you drag at a diagonal, it'll maintain proportions. Another option that you have when using the scale tool is to change the reference point. So this little icon here is the icon for the reference point. It's basically the same thing as an anchor point in After Effects. So with the scale tool, you can click to move this reference point anywhere you want it. So now when I scale the shape, it's gonna scale from that reference point. With the scale tool, if you option click on the reference point, it'll bring up this box where you can adjust the exact percentage scale for the shape. So you could type in exact dimensions and if you have preview checked, you'll be able to see that happen live. You could also do this non-uniformly. And you have the options for scale corners and scale strokes and effects, which aren't applicable to this shape, but it's helpful to have those options here. Also, keep in mind that you can only see the reference point when you're using the scale tool. If you're using the selection tool, you don't see that reference point. You can rotate objects with the selection tool. So first select the object and then hover outside of these little boxes on the bounding box. You should see this curved arrow icon. By clicking and dragging with that icon, you can rotate the shape. If you click and drag to rotate while holding down shift, it'll snap to 45 degree increments. You can also rotate objects with the rotation tool. So first select them with the selection tool and then grab the rotation tool or the keyboard shortcut is R and then just click and drag to rotate. Also with the rotation tool, you have the option to rotate from the reference point. To move the reference point, just click with the rotation tool and then click and drag to rotate from that reference point. Also, if you option click on the reference point, then you'll have options where you can type in the exact amount that you wanna rotate the shape. Keep in mind that the reference point is only visible when you're using the rotation tool. When you're using the selection tool, it's not visible. You can reflect shapes with the selection tool if you click and drag basically like you're scaling the shape, but you just drag so that it flips the shape over. Another way to do this where you can maintain the proportions is to use the reflect tool. This tool is underneath the rotation tool. So if you click and hold, you can find it here or the keyboard shortcut is O. 
With this tool, you can flip around the reference point. With the reflect tool, you just need to click and drag in the direction that you want to flip the shape. If you want to flip in 45 degree increments, so maybe perfectly horizontally, just hold down the shift key. To move the reference point, you can just click with the reflect tool. Also with the reflect tool, if you option click on the reference point, then you have options to flip perfectly horizontally, perfectly vertically, or you can choose an angle. The shear tool allows you to skew shapes. You can find it underneath the scale tool. It's going to skew from this reference point. Click and drag to shear the object. If you hold down shift, it'll snap to 45 degree increments. If you want to move this reference point, just click with the shear tool. With the shear tool, if you option click on this reference point, you can type in exact angles. You can also skew shapes with this option in the transform panel. Another way to transform objects is to first select them with the selection tool, then right click, go down to transform, and then these are your options for transforming the shape. So let's do scale. This will bring up the same box that you would get with the scale tool, and you can type in exact dimensions for how to affect the shape. This can be useful for precisely moving objects. Make sure that the layer is selected because if you right click without the layer being selected, you won't see the transform options. So select, then right click, transform, and then move or command shift M. Then you can type in the exact dimensions to move the object. Also, if you hit copy, it's gonna duplicate the shape in the position that you told it to move to. Another handy shortcut to add on to this technique is command D. This will duplicate the last action. Now that you know the basics of creating and editing shapes, in the next video, you'll learn about working with multiple shapes. Think duplicating, aligning, grouping, and more. Thanks for watching.